Good afternoon everyone, I'm Kimberly Mira alongside with Selwyn Brian Katong and Shania Christine Molina and this is the chapter 6 of the Fundamentals and Applications of Renewable Energy, Hydropower. The generation of electricity has greatly increased due to the rapid industrialization and urbanization in the past few decades. More precisely, it has been roughly 5,000 terawatt hour increase from the previous 351 terawatt hour in 1983. And with the increase in demand is also the growth of alternative sources and more sustainable sources of electricity. One of those is hydropower, which is also predicted to be one of the largest sources of energy by the year 2050, according to an article published by Bruna Alves last February 22, 2022. But this airiness endeavor to lessen the cost and use of fossil fuel to generate power started with a humble mechanism that has been around for centuries which most of us is already familiar with, which is the water turbines. In 1827, a French inventor created the first prototype of the Fernand reaction turbine, capable of generating roughly 6 horsepower. Following that was the world's first hydroelectric installation at the Cragside Country Estate in England that powered a single light in 1878. Four years later, the first hydraulic turbine generator set with a 10-meter high water tank and a power output of 6 kilowatt that powered light bulbs was built. This is then followed by the Northern Ireland first known hydroelectric power plant which was erected in 1883. Two turbines with a total power of 39 kilowatt hour were used in this facility. This installation provided power to an electric train. Turbines were used to convert readily accessible mechanical energy from rivers and other bodies of water into consumable mechanical work, often via a rotating shaft. When the working fluid is water, the turbo machines are known as hydraulic turbines or hydro turbines. Large dams are built in rivers' flow routes to gather water to create electricity. Water having potential energy is passed through turbines. A good example of this infrastructure is hydroelectric power plants. But, the construction of hydroelectric power stations with an accumulation reservoir is expensive and very time-consuming. The facility needed to operate a hydroelectric power plant is vast in scale, and the environmental implications of the plant requires careful analysis and study. This includes complex hydrological and topographical investigations for a thorough assessment site and plant features. Not to forget, the hydroelectric power plant's water reservoir is also utilized for irrigation, fish farming, and recreation. Large dynamic turbines are utilized in hydroelectric power plants to generate energy. These dynamic turbines can fall either into two categories, impulse or reaction turbines. When comparing the two side by side, impulse turbines require a greater head but may run at a lower volume flow rate. Reaction turbines, on the other hand, can function with considerably less head but requires a greater volume flow rate. The greater the difference between the two and an in-depth explanation will be discussed as we dive deeper into the analysis of hydropower. In the analysis on the hydroelectric power plant, the mechanical energy is defined as the energy that can be converted completely and directly into mechanical work by an ideal mechanical device, such as an ideal turbine. The formula of the mechanical energy is Emec is equals to P over rho plus v, v squared over 2 plus Gz, where Emec is the mechanical energy, P over rho is the flow energy, V squared over 2 is the kinetic energy, and Gz is the potential energy of the fluid. Then the mechanical energy change of a fluid during incompressible flow becomes the delta of Emec is equals to P2 minus P1 all over by rho plus V2 squared minus V1 squared all over by 2 plus G multiplied by the quantity of Z squared minus Z1. In the absence of the irreversible losses, the mechanical energy change represents the mechanical work supplied to the fluid if the delta Emec is greater than zero or extracted from the fluid if delta Emec is less than zero. 
the maximum the maximum power generated or ideal by a turbine is W max is equals to M delta E max, where W max is the maximum number generated by a turbine, which is ideal. The delta E max is equals to the change of the mechanical energy, and M is the mass flow rate of the fluid. The mass flow rate of the fluid fluid is based on a figure that we'll be showing next slide. This figure shows an ideal hydraulic turbine coupled with an ideal generator that simplifies mechanical energy. In the figure A, in the absence of irreversible losses, the maximum produced power is proportional to the change in power surface elevation from the upstream to the downstream reservoir. In figure B, shows the drop in water pressure from just upstream to just downstream of the turbine. If we take point 0.1 to the surface of the water reservoir and point 0.4 to the surface of the discharge water from the turbine base on the figure, the maximum power that the turbine can generate is W max is equals to M delta E max is equals to Mg multiplied by the quantity of Z squared minus Z1 is equals to MGH. Since the P1 is approximate equivalent to P4 is equals to atmospheric pressure or PATM. And V1 is equals to B4 is approximately zero. If we take point two to the turbine inlet and point three to the turbine inlet based on the figure on this slide, the maximum power that the turbine can generate is the W max is equals to M delta E max is equals to M multiplied by the multiply by the quantity of P two minus P three all over by rho is also equals to M multiplied by delta P over by rho. Since V2 is approximately equal to V3 and Z2 is approximately Z3. We are usually interested in increasing the pressure, velocity, and or elevation of a fluid in fluid systems. This is accomplished by delivering mechanical energy to the fluid via a pump, fan, or compressor. Alternatively, we are interested in a reverse process of a turbine extracting mechanical energy from a fluid and producing mechanical power in the form of a rotating shaft that can drive generator or any other rotary device. The turbine efficiency expresses the degree of perfection of the conversion process between the mechanical work extracted and the mechanical energy change of the fluid. It is defined as follows in rate form. The eta turbine is equals to W sharp over by delta capital E mech minus by W sharp over by M delta small E mech is equals to the W sharp over by MGH and is equivalent to W sharp over W max, where the eta turbine is equals to turbine efficiency, while the W shaft is the shaft power from the turbine. The M delta E mech is the rate of decrease of in the mechanical energy of the fluid, which the M delta E mech is equals to W max and MGH. Based on the notation in figure 62A, the mechanical energy change must be in positive value to avoid negative values for efficiencies. Having 100% of turbine efficiency means perfect conversion of shaft work to fluid mechanical energy. And this value can be approached but never attained as frictional effects are reduced. The generator efficiency defined as the eta generator is equal to W electric over by W shaft, where the eta generator is the generator efficiency, the W shaft is the shaft power from the turbine, and W electric is the electrical power output from the generator. Typically, a turbine is packaged with its generator. As a result, we are frequently interested in the combined or overall efficiency of the turbine generator combination.
which is defined as the eta turbine generator is equals to eta turbine multiplied by eta generator, which is also equals to the quantity of W shaft over by W max is multiplied by the W electric over by W shaft. The W shaft will be canceled. So it means the eta turbine generator is equal to W electric over W max. The majority of turbines have efficiency that are close to 90%. Large hydro turbines, on the other hand, have overall efficiencies of more than 95%. A hydroelectric power plant's analysis includes the turbine and the penstock, which is the piping system that connects the upper and lower water levels. The penstock can be also be seen in the figure on this slide. For this penstock turbine combination, the steady flow energy equation on a unit mass basis is as follows. EMEC in is equals to EMEC out plus EMEC loss, or P1 over rho 1 plus V1 squared over 2 plus GZ1 is equals to P2 over rho, rho 2 plus V2 squared over by 2 plus GZ2 plus the W turbine plus EMEC loss, where the W turbine is the mechanical work output due to a, due to a turbine. When the flow is incompressible, absolute or gauge pressure can be used to calculate the P because the atmospheric pressure over rho would appear on both sides and cancel out. Multiplying by the mass flow rate gives M multiplied by the quantity of P1 over rho 1 plus V1 squared over 2 plus GZ1 is equals to M multiplied by the quantity of P2 over rho 2 plus v2 squared over 2 plus gz2 plus plus w turbine plus emec loss total where the w turbine is the shaft power output through the turbine shaft and the capital emec loss total is the total mechanical power loss which consists of turbine losses as well as the frictional losses in the piping network which is the capital E MEC loss total is equals to capital E MEC loss turbine plus capital E, e Me, capital E MEC loss piping. By convention, irreversible turbine losses are treated separately from irreversible losses due to other components of the piping system. Thus, the energy equation expressed in its most common form in terms of heads by dividing each term by mg resulting p1 over by p1g plus v1 squared over 2g plus z1 is equals to p2 over p2g plus v2 squared minus 2g plus z2 plus h turbine e plus hl where h turbine e is equals to w turbine e over g plus w turbine e over mg plus W turbine over by eta turbine multiplied by mg. The H turbine is the extracted head removed from the fluid by the turbine. The H turbine E is greater than W turbine E over mg by factor the, of eta turbine. While the HL is equal to emic loss piping over g plus is equals to the capital E mech loss piping over mg. HL is the irreversible head loss, and HL is the frictional losses associated with fluid flow in a penstock are represented by head loss. It should be noted that the head loss HL represents the frictional losses associated with fluid flow in the penstock and does not include the losses that occur within the turbine due to its efficiencies in this device. These losses are accounted by the H turbine. The total head loss in the penstock is calculated as follows. The HL total is equals to HL major plus HL minor is equals to F multiply the LV squared all over by D2G 
plus the sum motive of KL multiplied by V2 over 2G is equivalent to the quantity of F F multiplied by LD or L over I mean L over D plus the summative of KL multiplied by V squared over 2G where the F is the Darcy friction factor which it can be determined by turbulent flow through Moody chart or Colebrook equation and laminar flow which F is equals to 64 over RE which RE is the Reynolds number. L is the length of the penstock, D is the diameter of the penstock, V is the velocity of water in the penstock, and K is the loss coefficient of minor losses in the piping system. In the figure 6.5, a typical hydroelectric dam that generates electricity using Francis reaction turbines. The elevation difference between the reservoir surface upstream of the dam and the surface of water exiting the dam is defined as the overall or gross head or H gross. The formula of gross head is equals to H gross is equals to ZA minus ZE. If there are no irreversible losses anywhere in the system, the maximum amount of power that could be generated per turbine would be the W max is equals to rho G V H gross where the raw is the density, G is the gravitational accelerate, acceleration, and V is the volume flow rate. Following the flow of water to the whole system of the figure 6-5, it begins upstream of the dam at point A, where the water is still at atmospheric pressure and at its the highest elevation, ZA. Water flows at the volume flow rate V through the dam's penstock, a large tube by closing a large gate valve called a head gate at the penstock inlet. Flow to the penstock can be stopped. We could insert a pitot probe at the probe point B at the end of the penstock just before the turbine. Then the water in the tube would rise to the column equal to the energy grade line EGLN at the turbine's inlet. The formula of EGL is EGL is equals to pressure head plus velocity head plus elevation head. is also equals to P over rho G plus V squared over 2G plus Z. It should be noted that the energy grade line or EGL represents the total fluid head. Due to the irreversible losses in the penstock and its inlet, this column height is lower than the water level at point A. The flow then passes through the turbine, which is connected to the electric generator via a shaft. It should be noted that the electric generator has irreversible losses. The exiting fluid, point C, retains significant kinetic energy or velocity head and may swirl after passing through the turbine runner. To recover some kinetic energy that would otherwise be wasted, the flow enters an expanding area, uh, expanding area diffuser known as the draft tube, which turns the flow horizontally and slows the flow speed while increasing the pressure prior to the discharge into the tail race. If there are the pitot probe at point D, the water in the tube would rise to, to a height equal to the EGL out. Because the draft tube is regarded as an integral component of the turbine assembly, the difference between the energy grade line just upstream of the turbine and the energy grade line at the exit of the draft tube is known as net head across the turbine. The H net is equal to EGL in minus EGL out. The flow speed at the draft tube exit point D is significantly slower than the point C upstream of the draft tube. However, it is finite. The tail race dissipates all of the kinetic energy that exits the draft tube. This represents irreversible head loss and explains why EGL out is greater than ZE. The elevation of the tail race surface. Nonetheless, pressure recovery is significant in a well-designed draft tube. The draft tube, or I mean draft tube, 
causes the pressure at the runner's outlet or point C to fall below the atmospheric pressure, allowing the turbine to make the best use of the avail available head. In other words, the draft tube causes the pressure at the runner outlet to be lower than it would have been without the draft tube. Thus, increasing the pressure change from the turbine's inlet to outlet. The overall efficiency of the entire hydroelectric plant define, defines as the ratio of the actual electric power produced to maximum power. The eta plant is equals to W electric over W max is equals to W electric over by the raw GVH gross. This kind of formula is equivalent to the turbine generator efficiency or that or the ETA turbine generator. The turbine efficiency by convention should be based on the net head or H net rather than gross head or H gross. Specifically, the ETA turbine is defined as the ratio of actual turbine output shaft power to energy power extracted from the water flowing through the turbine. The ETA turbine is equal to W shaft over the raw GVH net. When the total irreversible head loss in the piping is known, the corresponding power loss can be calculated as follows. The capital E MEC loss piping is equals to raw GVHL. Then the tube, I mean the turbine efficiency expressed as the eta turbine is equals to W electric over by W max minus by capital E MEC loss piping is equals to W electric raw GVH gross minus by raw GVHL. The eta turbine is equals to WG over by raw, v, raw, raw GV multiplied by the quantity of H gross minus HL. The effect irreversible head losses in the piping system can be accounted for using the efficiency term eta piping as Eta piping is equals to 1 minus the EMEC loss piping over by W max. And remembering the generator efficiency is the overall efficiency of the hydroelectric power plant can be expressed as the Eta plant is equals to Eta generator multiplied by Eta turbine plus, uh, I mean, multiplied by Eta piping, which also equals to W electric over W shaft multiplied by the quantity of W electric over by W max minus E MEC loss piping multiplied by the quantity of 1 minus E MEC loss piping over by W max is equals to the W electric over W shaft multiplied by W electric over by W max multiplied by 1 minus E MEC loss piping over W max is multiplied by the quantity of 1 minus E MEC loss piping over W max. To simplify, the eta plant is equals to W electric over W max. Therefore, the overall efficiency of a hydroelectric power plant is defined as the electrical power output divided by the maximum power potential, and it can be expressed as a product of generator, turbine, and piping efficiencies. For example, 6.1, the river water is collected into a large dam whose water weight is 240 feet. How much power can be produced by a set of ideal hydraulic turbines hydro hydraulic turbines if water is run enough through the turbine at a total rate of 9,000 GPM? So for the solution, the given will be H is equals to 240 feet and the V is equals to 9,000 gallon per minute. The density of water is assumed to be R is equals to 62.4 pounds over feet cube. The total mechanical energy of power in a dam is equivalent to the potential energy of water at the dam's free surface. And it can be completely converted to work for ideal operation. As a result, the maximum power can be produced is equal to the potential energy of water. So by solving the total mass of the flow rate of water, M is equals to density 
density or rho multiplied by V is equals to 62.4 uh, pounds over foot cube multiplied by 9,000 gallon per minute. To convert, we need to multiply by 1 feet cube over by 7.4804 gallon multiplied by 1 minute over 60 seconds. In results, the M is equals to 1,251.3 pounds per second. Next, we'll, we'll now be solving the maximum power. The W max is equals to MGH is e equals to 1,251.3 pounds per second multiplied by 32.2 feet per second squared. This is the gravitational acceleration eh, multiplied by 240 feet, the, the H. Again, to, to solve the maximum power, we need to convert by 1 BTU over pounds over by 7.4804 feet squared over second squared multiplied by 1 kilojoule over by 0 0.94782 BTU multiplied by 1 kilowatt over by 60 kilojoules. So cancel out the, the like terms and the answer of the maximum power, the W max is equals to 408 kilowatts. So that's all for the analysis on the hydroelectric power plant. I'd like to present the impulse turbine. In an impulse turbine, the fluid is sent through a nozzle so that most of its available mechanical energy is converted into kinetic energy. The high-speed jet then impinges on bucket-shaped veins that transfer energy to the turbine shaft, as you can see on the left picture. The schematic diagram of a Pelton-type impulse turbine. The modern and most efficient type of impulse turbine was invented by Lester A. Pelton in 1878. And the rotating wheel is now called a Pelton wheel in his honor. The buckets of a Pelton wheel are designed to split the flow in half and turn the flow nearly 180 degrees around with respect to a frame of reference moving with the bucket. According to legend, Pelton modeled the splitter ridge shape after the nostrils of a cow's nose. A portion of the outermost part of each bucket is cut out so that most of the jet can pass through the bucket that is not aligned with the jet to reach the most aligned bucket. In this way, the maximum amount of momentum from the jet is utilized. The picture on the right shows a Pelton wheel in operation. The splitting and turning of the water jet are clearly seen. Here is a close-up view of a Pelton wheel showing the detailed design of the buckets. The electrical generator is on the right. This Pelton wheel is on display at the Wadamana Power Station Museum near Boatwell, Tasmania. Now, this is the power output formula for impulse turbines. The output shaft power is equal to rho r omega v quantity v sub j minus r omega multiplied to the quantity 1 minus cosine beta. W shaft stands for output shaft power, rho for water density, r omega for tangential velocity, v for water velocity, V sub J for jet speed, and beta for incidence angle. On your right is the velocity diagram of flow into and out of a Pelton wheel bucket. We translate outflow velocity from the moving reference frame to the absolute reference frame by adding the speed of the bucket to the right. Lastly is the efficiency factor due to beta being less than 180 degrees. Obviously, the maximum power is achieved theoretically if beta is equal to 180 degrees. However, if that were the case, the water exiting one bucket would strike the backside of its neighbor coming along behind it, reducing the generate torque and power. It turns out that in practice, the maximum power is achieved by reducing beta to around 160 degrees to 165 degrees. And this is where the formula comes in. 
the efficiency factor is equal to the power output of the actual shaft over the power output of the ideal shaft or equal to quantity 1 minus cosine beta over quantity 1 minus cosine 180 degrees. For an actual pelt and wheel turbine, there are other losses besides that reflected in the equation, such as mechanical friction, aerodynamic drag on the buckets, friction along the inside walls of the buckets, and non-alignment of the jet and bucket as the bucket turns, back splashing, and nozzle losses. Even so, the efficiency of a well-designed pelt and wheel turbine can approach 90%. In other words, up to 90% of the available mechanical energy of the water is converted to rotating shaft energy. Again, 180 degrees is the ideal beta to get maximum power. And the ideal maximum power achievable by a pelt and turbine occurs when the wheel rotates at omega equals V sub J over 2R, that is, when the bucket moves at the half speed of the water jet. The image in the right side of the screen is the top and side views of our action turbine, including the fixed tank vanes and adjustable wicket gates. The reaction turbine is the other primary type of energy producing hydro turbine and it is composed of fixed guide vanes called the stay vanes, adjustable guide vanes called the wicket gates, and the revolving blades called the rudder blades. In response to fluids, pressure, and weight, a reaction turbine creates a torque. And it also features a spinning nozzle and a fixed rotor blades. The water impacts the rotor first, and then the nozzle. In the case of our, of our reaction turbine, low and medium head flow rates are ideal for this application. The flow enters tangentially at the high pressure is directed towards the runner by the stay vanes as it proceeds to the spiral casing or the volute and finally passes through the wicket gates it is with a substantial tangential velocity, according to the reaction turbine's operating principle. As the runner turns, momentum is exchanged between the fluid and the runner, and the significant pressure drops. When the water leaves the nozzle, it creates a reaction force. The runner spins at a rapid state or rate due to this reaction force. At the same diameter, net head and volume flow rate, a response turbine provides a greater power than an impulse turbine. Also, the wicket gate's angle may be adjusted to manage the volume flow of the, of the runner. The flow enters tangentially at a high pressure is directed towards the runner by the stay vanes as it proceeds down to the spiral casing or the volute and finally passes through the wicket gates with a substantial tangential velocity component according to the reaction turbine's operating principle. As the runner turns, the momentum is exchanged between the fluid and the runner which creates a significant pressure drop. When the water leaves the nozzle, it creates a reaction force. The rotor spins at the rapid state rate due to the reaction force. Uh, at the same diameter, net head and volume flow rate, a response turbine can provide a greater power than the impulse turbine. Also, the wicket gate's angle may be adjusted to manage the flow of the flow rate via the runner. Francis and Kaplan reaction turbines are the two most common types of reaction turbine. Kaplan turbine was developed in 1913 by the Austrian professor Victor Kaplan. It is also known as the propeller turbine since the runner looks like a ship's propeller. This includes an adjustable blades with a wicket gaze for maximum performance under various pressure and head situations. As a result, Kaplan turbine may achieve efficiencies up to 95% when operating at a low head, which is not visible with the Francis turbines. James B. Francis, on the other hand, invented the Francis turbine. This turbine is encased in the casing, and the blades have particular curve characteristics that help the turbine work effectively. These turbines work at a, at a depth of 10 to 650 meters at a turbine's generator can produce up to 750 megawatt of electricity. The turbines rotate at a rate of 80 to 100 times per minute. Francis turbines have vertical shaft assembly and a runner, which is a horizontally oriented rotor assembly that runs underwater. The water inlet is likewise vertical with the variable guide vanes directing the water towards the runner. The water's weight and pressure causes the runner to spin. Moving into the formulas in the equation used in the Francis turbine, starting with the uniform velocity of the inlet and outlet formula. Mu1, which is the uniform velocity of the inlet, is equal to pi multiplied to the 
diameter of the inner ring multiplied into the rotational speed all over to 60, while the mu2 or the uniform velocity of the outlet is equal to pi multiplied to the diameter of the inner ring and then multiplied into rotational speed all over to 60. Next is the work done formula, which is represented by capital W, is equal to V sub W1 multiplied to mu sub 1 positive negative V sub W2 times mu2 all over 2 the gravitational acceleration, wherein the mu sub 1 is the uniform velocity of the inlet, mu sub 2 is the uniform velocity of the outlet, v sub w1 is a component of the velocity of the jet v1 in vertical direction, and the v sub w2 is a component of the velocity of the jet v2 in vertical direction, and g is the gravitational acceleration which is equivalent to 9.8 meter per second squared. It is then followed by the power formula wherein the P out is equal to torque multiplied to angular velocity. P in is equal to the density of water multiplied to the gravitational acceleration multiplied into volume of flow rate of water and multiplied into total available head at a turbine inlet. So next is the turbine specific speed. So what is a turbine specific speed? Turbine specific speed one of the useful parameters in the preliminary selection of hydraulic turbines is defined in, in terms of two independent dimensionless parameters for turbines, namely power coefficient and head coefficient. Turbine-specific speed is also used to characterize the operation of turbine at its optimum conditions or best efficiency point and is useful for preliminary turbine selection. So for the formula of turbine-specific speed, we have NST is equal to the square root of CP over by CH raised to 5 over 4. It is also equals to the quantity of BHP over by rho multiplied by mu cube multiplied by D raised to 5 raised to 1 over 2 all over by the quantity of GH all over by mu squared D squared raised to 5 over 4. To simplify this, the NST is equals to rho multiplied by the square root of BHP all over by the square root of rho multiplied by GH raised to 5 over 4, where NST is equals to turbine-specific speed, CP is the power coefficient, CH is the head coefficient, BHP is the brake horsepower, mu is the rotational speed, rho is the fluid density, G is the gravitational constant, and H is the net head. This formula is also called the non-dimensional form of turbine-specific speed. Despite the fact that NST is a dimensionless parameter, by definition, practicing engineers have become accustomed to being in consistent units that turn NST into a cumbersome dimensional quantity. Most turbine engineers in the United States use the following formula. The NST US is equals to N multiplied by the square root of PHP all over by the H raised to 5 over 4, where the NST US is the turbine specific speed in US version, BHP is the brake horsepower in horsepower unit, N is the rotational speed in RPM unit, and H is the net head in feet unit. There is some discrepancy in the turbo machinery literature over the conversions between the two forms of turbine-specific speed. To, con to convert the NST in US form to NST in the non-dimensional form, we divide by the gravitational constant raised to 5 over 4 and the rho, the density, raised to 1 over 2, and then use the conversion ratios to cancel all units. So the conversion of the two tur turbine specific speed is one NST in the US version is equivalent to 0 0.02301 NST in non-dimensional form or in one non-dimensional form of a turbine specific speed is equivalent to 43.46 turbine specific speed in US version. 
The metric or SA version of turbine specific speed is also becoming more popular these days. And many hydro turbine designers prefer this type of version, and it is called the capacity specific speed. The formula of the SI version of turbine specific speed is the NST of SI is equals to N multiplied by the square root of V all over by H raised to 3 over 4, where the NST SI is the turbine specific speed of SI version, V is the volumetric flow rate where the unit is meter cube per second. The N is the rotational speed where the unit is RPM and H is the net head where the unit is in meters. Um, this type of formula is similar to the US version of the turbine specific speed, but it differs to, to the units used and the exponent value of the net head. In this figure, it shows the what type of turbines can be used depending on the results of the efficiency and the turbine specific speed. Impulse turbines perform optimally for the turbine specific speed near 0.15, while the Francis turbine and Kaplan or propeller turbine prefers best at the turbine specific speed near 1 and 2.5. So if the result of the turbine specific speed is less than about 0.3, the best choice is the impulse turbine. If it ranges between 0.3 and 2, a Francis turbine is a better choice. Well, that when the, tur the tur turbine specific speed is greater than about 2, a Kaplan or propeller turbine should be used. So that's all for the turbine specific speed and the last one will be about the water wheels. Moving on to the next topic which is the run of river plants and water wheels. Most of the electricity from hydroelectric power plants is produced using accumulation reservoirs, also called dams. Run of river plants, also called river plants or small hydroelectric power plants, do not use water reservoirs. Instead, they are built along a water stream such as a river. In this system, a proper portion of the water stream is diverted to a turbine generator unit and the used water is returned to the river as shown in the picture. This is the working principle of a run of river plant where is the barrier placed in the river to control water discharge. Four Bay is part of the canal from which water is taken to run the turbine. The flow rate of a river is not constant as it varies with season, month, and day. Consequently, this scheme of hydropower generation does not make full use of the water stream most of the time. This is because the capacity of the system is normally selected for an average water flow rate or rated flow rate. When the flow rate is more than the rated flow, excess water is diverted from the turbines and not used for power generation. Installing a large turbine generator system to accommodate the highest possible water flow rate increases the amount of power generation, but this also increases the initial cost, and the system operates at part load and possibly lower efficiency most of the time. Therefore, the selection of system capacity is a trade-off between the initial cost, power output, and efficiency. A run of river plant is installed when there is sufficient velocity and flow rate from a river. To estimate the power potential from a river, we consider river water flow at a mass flow rate of m, a velocity of v, and negligible elevation change. A hydraulic turbine converts the kinetic energy of this water into power. The power potential formula for the run of river plants can be computed by m multiplied by v squared over 2 or rho av multiplied by v squared over 2 or rho a multiplied by v cubed over 2. Now let's look at this short clip from an anime called Dr. Stone featuring a water wheel. This will only take less than a minute to give you a short break. Yeah, 
自動ワタメキトがそんなレベルの話じゃねえギアと水車ができりゃ人力の時代は終了だついに自然様の力をいただく Okay, so going back to our discussion, a water wheel is different from a runoff river plant in a water wheel is installed directly into falling or free-flowing water to convert the energy of the water into power. This is particularly illustrated for a lower bucket type of water wheel in which water flows through the lower blades called buckets causing the wheel to rotate. A more common type of water wheel involves upper bucket for which water flows through the upper buckets, fills them, and forces the wheel to rotate due to the weight acting on the buckets. Water wheels were used since ancient times for milling flour, grist mills, and they are still used in some parts of the world for this application. Previously, they were also used for water lifting for irrigation. Grinding wood into bulk for paper making, machining, hammering wrought iron, and powering mine hoists. They are usually made from wood or steel, with shovels of blades fixed regularly around their circumference. Water pushes the shovels or buckets tangentially around the wheel, causing torque to develop on the shaft. The rotational speeds are Typically low, and these machines have low efficiencies due to losses such as friction, turbulence, and incomplete filling of the buckets. Water wheels are simple devices, and operation is not affected by dirty water. Since water wheels have very low rotational speed, the generator requires high rates of speed multipliers for the production of electricity. This presents additional losses to the system. The efficiency of a water wheel for the production of electricity is very low. The power potential from a water wheel can be determined from the formula mgh or rho vgh, where m is the mass flow rate, g is the gravity, v is the volume flow rate, h is the head of the water, that is the height difference between water streams at the input and output of the water channel. And raw is the water density.